Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the fifth video in the W25Q Flash series, and today we will continue with writing data into the memory. In the previous video we saw how to write a page, or number of pages using the page program command. We were able to successfully write the data, but in doing so, the entire sector was getting erased. This will not work for the case, where you want to just update a small part of the memory, while keeping the remaining data untouched. So in today's video we will see how to write the data without affecting the other regions of the sector. We will achieve this in four different steps. First copy the sector's data into the RAM. Then update the RAM's data with the new data. Then erase the sector. And finally push the updated data into the sector. The only drawback with this method is that it is going to consume some extra time, since we need to write the entire sector, even for a small update. But this is the only way to go about it, as we already know, the device does not let us erase anything smaller than a sector. Further in the video, we will also cover how to write and read a single byte into the memory, without erasing the sector. But this method of writing only works, if that particular memory location was already erased. Alright, this is the previous project that we were working on. I mentioned in the previous video, that the code isn't fully tested, so there might be issues. I found one issue with the write function. Actually whenever I tried to write more than 250 bytes at once, the function wasn't able to write the data. I don't know if you guys experienced this issue or not, but I faced it, so I am going to write a fix for it. To fix it, I am going to put a separate condition, if the data size is more than 250 bytes, then we will send the data into two separate instructions. First send the first 100 bytes of data, and then send the remaining data bytes. If the data size is less than 250 bytes, then the data will be sent in the usual manner. This will fix that issue, and the testing will be done in the next function itself. The next function is going to update the data of the entire sector. The function is going to be similar to how we wrote the page write function, so let's copy some part of it. The write page function, which we covered in the previous video, actually writes the data while clearing the sector also. So let's rename it to the write clean, as it cleans the entire sector before writing the data into it. And the new function is just going to update the data, so we'll just name it write. We will focus more in the sectors here, so let's remove the page related functions. First we will calculate the start sector, instead of the start page, we will use the parameter page. To calculate the end sector, we need the end page value, but since we don't have it, let's copy the code from the previous function, and directly put it here. The number of sectors will be calculated in the usual manner. Let's define an array of 4096 bytes, to store the data stored in the sector. We also need to calculate the sector offset. This is similar to page offset, but it will be calculated from the start of the sector. For example, if I want to write on page 20, at an offset of 100. The page 20 lies in sector 1, so this section will result in the value 4, which is basically 4 pages. Each page contains 256 bytes, so we multiply 4 with 256, and add the page offset to it. This would give us the memory offset of 1124 from the start of the current sector. Let's define a variable to keep track of the data index inside the data to be written. All the definitions are over, so we will call a for loop, as many times as the number of sectors we need to write. Here we will first determine the start page. Start page is where the sector starts, so it can be either 0, 16, 32, 48, basically a multiple of 16. Next we will read the entire sector starting from the start page, 
and store the data in the array we defined earlier. Now we have the current data stored in the sector, so we just need to modify certain locations with our new data. But before doing that, we also need to calculate how many more bytes we have available in the sector. So let's write another function to find the remaining bytes in the current sector. We will call this bytes to modify, and instead of 256 bytes, it will be used for 4096 bytes. The bytes remaining variables will keep track of how many bytes we can modify in the current sector. This will depend on the sector offset we calculated earlier. Now in the for loop, we will modify the array we stored earlier, with the new data. The sector offset is the offset in the array where the modification will start, and the data index will be used to keep track of how many bytes of the data pointer have been already used. After updating the array, we will call the write clean function, and write the entire sector. This will clear the sector before writing data into it, but we are writing the entire data back into the sector. The final result is going to be a sector update, instead of writing fresh data into it. After the write is done, we will update the start sector and set the offset to zero, so that the new position will be the start of the next sector. We have already copied some data from the data pointer, so update the data index. Also the size will be reduced as we have already copied some data into the current sector. These updated values will be used for the next transfer in the new sector. Let's quickly go over it once again. We find the start sector, end sector, and number of sectors to be modified. Then calculate the sector offset. Then read the data from the sector and store it in an array. Then calculate how many bytes we can update in the current sector, and finally update the data. After updating the data, write the data into the sector. Then update the variables for the next transfer. Let's define this function in the header file. All right in the main file, we already have the variable index. When the button is pressed, we will increment this index variable. And for each value of this index variable, we will perform different operations. If the index value is 1, we will write the data at the beginning of the memory. Let me typecast these to character pointers to avoid any warnings. Similarly if the index value is 2, we will write the data to page 2, at an offset of 44. Page 0 and page 2 both are in sector 0, so if the code works, we should see both the data at their respective locations. We are calling the write function, to update the data in the sector. If the index value is 3, we will write the data to page 15 at an offset of 250. I chose this location on purpose, this is towards the end of sector 0. This data will cross the sector boundary, and some part of it will be written in sector 1. If the index value is 4, we will write the data to page 20, which is in sector 1. So we are writing data into two sectors, and to verify the data, we need to read both sectors. This is why we are reading 8192 bytes from the start of the memory. Let's build and debug the code now. These breakpoints will verify which function is being called. At first we will get the data at the beginning of the memory. Right now the data is ff hex. I am pressing the button now. We have hit the breakpoint, let's resume the debugger. Here we have received the first set of data in the beginning of the buffer itself. I pressed the button, and we hit the second breakpoint. We will receive the data from page 2,44, 
which is the address 556 from the beginning. Here we have the new data stored at the same address. If we check the previous data at the beginning of the memory, it is still there. So this means the sector was updated, rather than how it was getting completely erased in the previous video. Now we will see if the data is able to cross the sector boundary. The page 15,250 is at the offset 4090 from the beginning. There are only 6 bytes remaining to be written on this sector, and our data size is more than that. Here you can see the data crossed the boundary successfully, and we have the continuous data. This time we updated sector 0 and sector 1, and we still have the previous data in sector 0. I didn't hit the last breakpoint because I didn't change it to 4. But I hope you understood how this works. We were able to write two sectors continuously, and the sectors got updated instead of clean writing. We will also see two more functions today, one for reading a single data byte directly from a memory, and another one for writing a single byte into the memory. Let's start with reading the memory location first. This function will directly return the data, and it takes the memory address as the parameter. Most of the code will be similar to the read function, so let's copy it. Let's remove this, as we are passing the address in the parameter itself. Let's define a variable, which will hold the data received. After reading the data, we will return the data. We need to pass the address of the variable, as this function takes the pointer as the parameter. And we are reading only one byte. Now we will write another function to write the one data byte. The parameter will be the address, and the data to be written. Let's copy the read function, and we will modify it later. The array will have one extra byte, the data byte. Let's define the variable index. We need to pass the instruction for the page program. Also the last byte of the array will be the data itself. Now update the index value according to the bytes occupied in the array. Before writing the data we need to confirm that the memory location has been erased. So we will read the location, and only proceed if the value returned is ff hex. If the location is erased, we will first enable the write. Then pull the cs pin low, write the command along with the data, and pull the cs pin high. Now wait for the write operation to finish, and finally disable the write. Let's define these functions in the header file. Or write in the main function, after the button is pressed, we will write different bytes to different data locations. The first few bytes are already occupied by this data, so let's write to the address 30. We will write the character C. At the address 32, let's write another character T. Now to demonstrate that the overwriting will not work, let's write another character to the address 10, which already holds some data from previous code. We can also write in a loop, here we will send 10 bytes of data starting from the address 1000. Alright let's build and debug the code. We are expecting data, in the beginning of the buffer itself. You can see the data from previous code is still there. 
I am pressing the button now. Here you can see the characters C and T got updated in their respective positions. Also the data we wrote at position 10 couldn't overwrite the previous data that position. Now let's check the address 1000. Here we have the values from 0 to 9. Writing single byte works fine, but make sure you write only to the location which is empty. So we were able to update sectors, and write single byte in today's video. In the next video we will cover how to write numbers, floats, and 32-bit variables. This is it for today. I hope you understood the concept. Leave comments in case of any doubt. The link to download the code is in the description below. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.